Well, good day, everybody. We're back. And today, we're going to do all the brake hardware on Franz's 64 Mercury Marauder. Having said that, let's get to it. I'm going to go ahead and jack up the car. Once you got the jack in place, we're going to remove the hubcap and then break the lug nuts loose. Carefully. These are hen's teeth. Look at that. Let's give you a... Isn't that amazing? You did good. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and finish jacking the car up. And slide the jack stand under the frame of the car. A little higher. And one more. Perfect. Finish spinning the lug nuts off. Put all your parts in a bucket, just keeps them all organized. Move the tire. Always listen to your elders, folks. Cadillac made special for from 04 to 09. The price is off for fuck's sake. So, but except and listen, right? That's not it. He said, Oh, shit, that's probably from a newer. I said, That's from a newer. And listen, Cadillac. now once again, we're just going to remove the dust cap and gently, too. Just start with a screwdriver, or in this case, I got a tack remover, and just get the edge started. Once you got it started, just get in there with a the bar. There, bro. See if you can hit the bucket. Oh, you got it. Now remove the cotter pin. Just like that. Just straighten it out. We'll slide it back through the hole. Move the capture nut. It's like a little castle nut. And the spindle nut off. And once again, if it's set right, you should be able to break it by hand. And this one was, well, we did it. So I guess that's on us. And put that in our bucket. Okay, Franz, show them the trick. Look at that. Look at that, folks. Oh, that's three-pointer for sure. And remove the drum. And the hub in this case. Just gonna go ahead and inspect our bearing again on this side of the car. We already did it, but we're, we're gonna show you how to do this. What you wanna look for is any cracks in the cage here, or spin that Franz. And we just wanna look for any funny colors, that's it. Feel for any pitting. And this one looks fine. The other side was good too. And we, like I said, we already checked this one out. But uh, we're just showing you how to do this. You wanna look for splits. They commonly go right at the end of these bowl, these roller bearings here. Uh, look for like a split on the end. Make sure the cage is good. Just make sure the bearings, they turn fine and they're not gritty or they don't got any pits in them or funny colors. And that's it, just give them an inspection. Uh, we already repacked these, didn't we? Yes, we did. Uh, yes, we you wanna did. repack them again? Greasy. <laughs> Greasy. So again, we're gonna put the drum off to the side and we already freshen this one up and paint it and it still looks great but you want to cover this just move it off to the side because we're working with brake parts here there's going to be a lot of dirt and dust and just you don't want it in the bearings so just cover them up put it off to the side keep it clean keep it safe and then we can just put it right back on this one's already repacked now we promised it and here it is this time we're going to do a wheel cylinder on this side and we're going to do the brakes without the brake buddy this time just using screwdrivers and pliers just to show you like we said we would that it's fine to do it both ways you just got to be careful and take your time be patient let's get to it yeah, there we go and just get your screwdriver under like this just pop it around and if it slips off don't worry about it just go at it again be patient take your time and then just lift, just like that. Oh, and I mean, there you go, just like that. 
same thing over here. You go up, you can go down, it doesn't really matter. And there you go, just like that. Remove your eyelet. Take your spring and your adjuster out. Okay, and the other one. Should put a little brake lube on those. Huh. There you go. There you go, folks. No brake buddy needed. But they're nice to have. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just that, yeah, you can do it without them. Drop that sucker. Almost easier for releasing these hold down springs. Yeah, uh, needle nose vice grips works good too. And just remove your shoes as a unit. Remove our retainer. The barest back end plate you ever seen. Yeah, and we all. Uh, if you got bad grooves in these, we, we showed you in the last episode. Just tune into that and you can see how we repaired them. But yeah, they're working just fine. Okay, now we're going to take this nut off to get this wheel cylinder off. But before we do that, you can see this tab here. We have to bend that back in order to turn this nut off. It's on there to keep it from backing off because of all the heat and the vibration in here. But before we even do that, we're going to go on the back side here and we're going to break loose, just break loose, not remove the brake line. Now's a good time to inspect your rubber brake hose. And this is where we'll be breaking it loose, right there. Now we're going to pinch off our brake line just before we break this loose. And, you know, protect your brake line. I put a little piece of foam on there. That would do something like that. And we just want to squeeze that shut. Not too terrible tight, but you got to pinch it off or else we're going to drain all the fluid out of the master cylinder. We'll have to bleed everything. We got to bleed it anyway, but this just helps and it helps from keeping a mess. Just go like that. Now we'll break this loose off the wheel cylinder. Oh, good. That came. That's nice. But just break it loose. You can't keep spinning it unless you undo this end of the line and we're not going to do that i'm going to show you a trick if we're lucky we can feed this out now and turn the wheel cylinder right off the line we don't have to undo this and then there's another chance that this could break off and then you get into a whole mess uh we've got a little trick here we're going to use that we've broken it loose we're going to now we're going to take this nut off take the wheel cylinder out and see if we can spin it off the line without breaking the the soft line loose on the other end we're just going to take a little small flathead screwdriver and get under that guy just like that and just pry him up and out of the way so we can get that nut off just like that once you got it up get a bar just like that can you see that in there perfect this sucker's going to be on there. Uh, yeah, I, I broke that loose with a bar. Ignore my foot. That, no, that's my foot massager. Don't, don't look under there. Don't just look up here. Look, look, I'm spinning the nut off. That, I broke that loose with a bar. Okay, come on, folks. That sucker's been on since Christ was a cowboy here. Painter. And you can see they fold these ears over to hold the housing. And then this one folds down towards the outside of the car to hold the nut in place. And yeah, we're going to put a little anti-seize on that sucker next time. Because it's got a retainer. You don't need to put it on there dry like that. Okay, now we're going to take our wheel cylinder off. You can see we turned the wheel a little bit too. Just give us a little more slack. And there we go. Once we get that off, we've already broken it loose. Oop, we'll take the sliders out. We are going to lose a little bit of fluid here, so. But we pinched the brake line off. We're not going to drain the whole master cylinder. Go like that. And if you're lucky, if you're real lucky, yeah, and we do, we have just enough room to turn the wheel cylinder off, just like that. And then you don't have to undo that line. It's just a neat trick. I hope that helps somebody out there. 
it just might save you replacing all the hard lines, especially on an old car like this. There you go. It's a little tricky, but yeah, you can do it. Turning the new one on is going to be fun, too. Ta-da. Now, guys, you'll see, I'm going to take that off there so you can have a look at it. There's a little copper, it's a washer, it's, it's a gasket, it's a sealing gasket. And you have to have that in there. So be very careful when you're, if you tip it over and if you drop it on the floor or anything, make sure you find it because you need that. It won't seal. It'll leak like a sieve without it. So very important. Do not lose that thing. We're going to clean that one off. Go like that. Get a nice clean surface to mate on there. I'm just going to put her right on there. Ooh, we'll clean this side off a little too. Remember this that. Clean as you go, people. Okay, now we're going to show you how to rebuild a wheel cylinder. Go ahead and start by removing the outer rubber boots. Just like that. We already took the sliders off. And there's your piston. That just slides out like that. There you go. Other side. And the piston. There we go. And your rubber seal. There's the other side. And your spring. And there we go. We're left with our original housing. And we're going to rebuild that and put it back in the car. Just like new. So guys, I want you to take one of your bars like this or a screwdriver and a clean rag like this. Put the rag over the bar, and now we're going to clean that housing. Just like that, just to get it through there, and then we'll pull the rag all the way through. And there you go. We're just going to clean that out really good. We want it the bore as minty as we can get her, and we're going to check her for wear before we rebuild it. If you look in there, you want it just clean like that. And we checked it. This is perfectly reusable. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, we got a couple spots in there, just a little sludge. We're going to wipe that out. We're just going to go ahead and clean that with a little brake clean. Make sure you get it really good. You don't want any crap in that. And just dry that off. Give it a fine old wipe. And that should be ready to go. Okay, we've got all our new parts laid out here. And usually what goes on them is these seals right here and right here what we're going to do is going to take a little bit of brake fluid just on your fingertip and just give it a quick little lube you want to put gloves on for this you really you know i don't mind the oil and stuff but you really don't want this stuff on your skin just a light lube that's fine we just want to put these in without hurting them okay so we're going to start with a seal slide that in Kind of get her nice and square like that. Okay. Now we're going to put our spring in. We're actually reusing the old spring. This is the new one that comes with the kit. And this one was built in 1964. And you check for the length here. And this one hasn't compressed much. It's well within parameters. And this is a much better made spring. This one's, uh, as you can see, it's a lot cheaper looking. The spring tension is still good on this one. So we're going to use this one. It's got a bigger diameter. It pushes more evenly on the piston. So we're just going to go ahead and reuse that. There's nothing wrong with that. Slide that right back in there. And make sure that sucker's in the middle of your seals. You can put a little on the rubber too if you want, and neither way is wrong. Slide those in there. We've got our new pistons. There we go. Slide that in. And the other side. The dimple goes to the outside. That's where your uh, sliders sit. There we go. Let's compress that. Slip that right in there. There we go. And they seem to be moving nicely and freely. Just you can push on that a little bit. See how it's sliding. And we push up on the bottom. Just make sure it's moving freely. And it is. Check the other side. Should do the same thing. Make sure you've got them 
nice and square in the hole and they're not at a weird angle you don't want them jammed in there okay and now we just put our new seals on just like that there's a little ridge there that's where they go on just like that don't tear them be patient they look a little different than the old ones and i think i have them right here okay you can see that the difference that's not a concern that's perfectly fine both are acceptable this is just a different style but they both work just fine now the other side and that's it and if you've got a good wheel cylinder and there's nothing wrong with this thing it's well built uh, you can save a lot of money by just buying the kit instead of the entire new wheel cylinder make sure our copper washer is on there before you start now we're going to reinstall the wheel cylinder and make sure you've got this thing square when you start it if you feel any resistance stop there's something wrong this should go in there nice and easy do not strip this thing or you're going to have big problems so you just kind of put it on there squarely and feel it it should turn very easy there we go just like that we're just going to spin that on we'll tighten it up at the end once that's bottomed out just slide it on and over like so make sure it's all the way in there just like that and our lock ring put that on first and our retainer nut now you can see that's the thrust side that's the face side don't mix them up put that side facing in this is the flat side this has got like a little bit of a chamfer to it so you want that side facing in holy chamfer batman <laughs> Just like that. We're going to go ahead and tighten that to 30 foot pounds. Not 400 or whatever it was at when we took it off. There it goes. And that's it. Now we're going to go ahead and put that lock tab back down on there. Just like that. We're going to go ahead and tighten up our brake line. Make sure that's good and snug. It's a little hard to see in there, folks. It's really hard to see in there. Okay, that's all tight. We're going to leave this crimped just for a minute. We're going to put the sliders in first. We're going to put a little brake lube on our sliders here. Just around the base. It'll make it easier to get into the rubber and on the head. Just like that. Just leave it right in there. When we put the shoes on, that'll push it right to the bottom. And then these will move a little freer. There's one. Put him in there just like that. And the other one. Clean them off really good, best you can. And we'll put our brake lube on. And there we go. Slide that guy in. Yes. Nicely, just like that. go ahead and unkink our brake line put this foam on there that way it just won't hurt it and now Franz is going to clean off the axle <laughs> all that blue grease yeah, yeah don't worry we're gonna put fresh we just don't want that getting in our bearings stuff's been falling in it it looks good but it's not there's sand there's grit in there we don't want that so we're gonna clean that off really good and then we're gonna clean it again before we put the brake drum back on in the hub we're gonna start installing our new brake hardware and once again folks I just want to show you this this is new old stock this was made in 1964 it's been in this ever since then and there's the original piece of cardboard that came on the box it was in they must have transferred it to a plastic bag later isn't that cool that part is from 1964 and look at that eh it's got the, the you could tell the paper it's printed on like that's piece of history we're gonna keep that just for keepsake that is so cool this is our new adjuster for 
the right side of the car, if you look, you see how I'm turning that? Well, it should be in, but in this case, it's reverse thread. So it's very important this goes on the right side of the car. And pay mind to that, because the way these brake adjusters work, they both of them, the wheel goes to the back. So on one side, it's correct thread. On the opposite side, for the adjuster to work the same way, it's reverse thread. So this is for the right side of the car. Now these come brand new, but they're not lubed when you buy them. So it's very important that we lube it now. We're going to put a little bit in there before we install it. And let's do that now. So again, put a little bit of our brake lube on there, just like that. And don't be shy, get the thrust washer too. You can see that little washer on there. You want to get that guy too. And the whole surface. I think in the last episode we had one that was dry and you guys saw how rusty that was in there. Uh, don't do that. that. That's not good. They can seize. In fact, one of them on the last episode was seized. This one's turning free and just beautiful. And we're going to go ahead and spin this out. And we're going to put a little brake lube in the threads and in the ends here. So let's do that right now. See the threads there? Now we go ahead and we'll spin her in reverse thread. Here I go again. Okay, yeah, spin her in, which is out in every other case there. But, uh, yeah, just like that. We're going to have it all the way in for now, and then we're going to adjust it at the end. We want it all the brake shoes all the way in. It's easier to get the drum on and stuff, and we'll adjust it. These are self-adjusting, and we're going to show you how to do that too. But to start with, just get them all the way in or almost don't cinch them all the way down so they're locked leave them open a bit so they're spinning free that's good enough just line the two ends up like that and put a little lube in there and then we're going to install it get your wheels adjuster in there we're going to put the brake shoes on now we already put our lube in all the ends there am i anywhere close here yeah there we go I'm going to slide that in. Oh, I completely missed it. Oh, there's one. Oh, re rotate that just a little bit, Franz. I think I had it pretty close. Just like that. And compress them as much as you can. Put a plate back on. Just like that. And put our retainers back on. There's one. There you go. Just like that. Perfect. Good shot, man. Good shot. And that. The spring on. And I need another cap. Oh, there they are. Oh, come. And just quarter of a turn like that. And there you go. Put a little brake lube right on the cam. <laughs> what does it say? Install cable with crimp side towards backing plate. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Okay, just put some on the back there just so this doesn't seize up. And so it can move freely a little bit in the hole there. And that sucker goes right there like that. Now the eyelet. And you can see this has got a flat side and a raised side. The flat side goes towards the wheel cylinder. Just like that. Put your cable over and just let it hang for right now. Now our brake adjuster cam. We're going to put a little bit right in there, a little bit right there, and a little bit where it touches the wheel. And just smear that around. Not a lot. You just want it to slip a little bit. You don't have to hose it. Just put a little in there. And that goes right in there and right on the adjuster wheel like that. Put our new brake spring in. And that's going to go to our adjuster. You just need a pair of pliers. Just like that. Okay. Now put our long spring. That goes to the cam side. Turn it in like that. 
up. Okay, watch your fingies. And there's one. You just hook that cable in there. And we're gonna do our last spring. And that would be this guy. This is our short one. She goes in that hole. All you do is insert, insert the hook like that. Rotate the whole thing, and there you go. You're ready to go. Put your screwdriver in there. Remember, folks, we're doing this side without the brake buddy. Just to show you can. A little more difficult, but it'll work. Just like that. We're going to give that axle a good final clean. Make sure there's no grit in there at all, including at the back here. This is where the seal rides where the bearings are in the hub so we're going to clean that out really good just like that make sure just check it with your hands make sure it's not gritty or anything and now we're going to add fresh grease to our axle we already packed these bearings last time so we're not going to show that we had that in a previous episode don't be stingy put some on there there we go and Take some on your finger, move it around, get the back where that seal sits so it slips on there good and we don't tear the seal, putting the hub back on. Okay, get it all around that axle, just like that. There you go, make sure your fingers are clean. <laughs> I actually just wash my hands. <laughs> they never stay clean for very long. <laughs> Glad you find that funny. <laughs> brake drum back on just like that and that went on really good so our brakes are nice and backed off we'll adjust those in a moment slide our already packed bearing back in there and our washer this has got a tang in it you can see there and that fits right in the slot there put that in like that and our nut Check for the thrust side, which is that side. There we go. Okay, so when you're tightening this, should spin freely. Don't over tighten it. When you start to feel just a little bit of drag like that, that's just about perfect. Go a little tighter. Just like that. Just a little bit more in hand tight. That's just about perfect right there. Just till you get a little bit of drag and even just back off just a little bit. There we go. That's perfect. Now we're going to put the retaining lock on. Okay, and we got to line it up for the holes for the cotter pin. Okay, so just kind of set it. Is that one good? Once we go through, oh, I don't think we're good on this side. And just find it, find the sweet spot. Oh, is that it? Is that it? Yeah, that's it right there. Okay, and bend the tangs of your cotter pin. And just bend your cotter pin like that. Top and bottom. Gonna put a little extra grease in our dust cap just like that and on here just like that <coughs> and there we go use our dead blow hammer there oh nice frost. very nice yep and don't you don't have to beat the crap out of them like this just Hit it a few times, just make sure to the bottom. And there you go. Now we're gonna loosen the bleeder screw. Remove the master cylinder cap. Okay. And you can see we didn't lose all our fluid. That's why we pinched that brake line off. Pump it. Okay, it's up now. Yeah, you should be getting some pressure, and that's a good sign. Okay, hold it. Okay, Franz, release the bleeder. 
Okay, and then hold it to the floor. Don't let the pedal come back up. Franz, tighten the bleeder up. And again, you're getting a lot more pressure now, aren't you? Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, hold it. Franz, release the bleeder. Sweet fluid this time, no air. That's good. We're still going to do it a couple of times, though, just to make sure. Now we've taken up some brake fluid here. We're going to top that back up. Very carefully. There we go. And we're going to run her again just to make sure we got all the air out. We're going to put the cap back on. We don't want it all over the place. There you go. Okay, now that we got the fluid out of our brakes, we're going to just do a rudimentary. Now, these are adjustable. You can just back the car up and pump the brakes and do it a couple of times, like three or four times. But uh, if you want to do it manually, not all of these uh, come with that cable. And you can run them without. You can adjust them manually, and we're going to show you how to do that right now. Use a small screwdriver or a small bar like this. Okay, now you want to go in this rear hole here. You want to go on the star reel. And you want to spin that, and you want to hear just a tiny bit of drag, like a very little. And that'll get you in the ballpark. Oh, oh, there we go. Just turn it up, because it's reverse thread, to drive them out. When you get just the slightest bit of drag, you can hear that? That's it. The car will do the rest when we back up, but that'll get us in the ballpark. Now we're just going to replace that rubber grommet to keep dirt out of there. Perfect. Reinstall the tire. Just like that. And the lug nuts. Just snug them in a star pattern before we lower the car down. And that'll get it seated. And remove the jack stand. Lower the vehicle. And tighten them down to 100 foot pounds in a star pattern. And go around twice and check them. Go back to where you started. Now we're going to install the hubcaps. Make sure they are secured because you don't want to lose one of these. Make sure you check your tire pressure. And fill it up accordingly. Perfect. Perfect. Close the Beautiful. Well, that's it for tonight, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We had a ball. I hope you did, too. I hope this was helpful to somebody. Have a good night, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to pet the cat. <laughs> don't forget to pet the cat. Good night, everybody.